October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and today we're focusing on men who have been victims in relationships. The National Coalition Against Domestic Violence says one in nine men are abused by their partner. One in 18 men have been stalked by their partner during their lifetime. And domestic violence is not limited to just physical abuse. Joining me now is Dr. Patrick Graham, public policy leader for JEDI and advocate for social change. Patrick is also a domestic violence survivor. Uh, Patrick, thank you for joining us um, and to lend your voice on this important topic. Uh, can you just briefly tell us your story, sir? Well, I think that um, if you start my story, my story was really about a case when um, I wanted to introduce the mother of my child to um, my partner and um, decide what we're going to do about um, her being in the life of my child. Um, and then two days uh, later, uh, things went very awry. Um, and so this has been one of the most difficult things that um, I've had to experience in my personal life. Um, and it just goes to show you that oftentimes, um, in many cases, we weaponize um, children, but we also let our emotions get away uh, with us when uh, people make decisions to move on with their lives. Yeah, and uh, also to add to that, um, you don't see men as the face of domestic violence. It's mainly women that we see. Uh, can you talk about how that is um, a stereotype, misconception, better yet? Uh, I think that um, domestic violence victims in general, uh, both women and men, underreport. But men underreport at even higher rates, uh, black men in particular. Why? Um, when you look at the well, I think one of the reasons, well, a few reasons. One is that black men don't think that anyone will believe them. Um, I think, two, there's this notion of machismo that makes many black men think that um, they should just be able to take it and um, not worry about it. The other is also protectionism. Um, a lot of times we're trying to protect those that we love or care about, um, those of our, our intimate partners. Um, and so we feel that because we can physically take certain things, um, therefore it's okay to let it go. So it's a, it's a, it's a real um, complex issue when it comes to black men in particular. Well, let's talk more about that. How does law, voice, uh, law enforcement, better yet, view a male domestic violence victim? Are you, were you taken seriously when you came forward with your uh, claims to law enforcement? No, as a matter of fact, they just actually really uh, <laughs> embraced the claims of the assailant. Um, at first, it took actually a tape for me that I didn't get until well after um, our DV hearings and everything else to actually be believed. Even a, a polygraph, um, the same one that uh, Christy Ford, uh, Blasey Ford took um, in her case, uh, and the same polygraph, just to show that I was uh, just being honest. And so what happens is that oftentimes with black men, uh, men in general, when we do call the police, you are actually um, 30 times more likely to be arrested just for calling. And so when you think about that, um, it's just not taken seriously. Oftentimes too, um, I've seen in many cases where men have just asked the officer just not to arrest the woman uh, because of fear of maybe losing a caregiver for their child or something of that nature, and um, and police just don't react. Where if it was in reverse, um, they would definitely react uh, a lot swifter. Well, let's talk about another situation that you were in. This was the mother of your child. So can you talk about how it can be difficult to escape situations like that, especially when a child is involved? And what advice do you give for other men who are possibly experiencing what you went through? Well, I think here's the thing that we find ourselves in a difficult situation with. You're trying to actually defend yourself and actually protect your assailant at the same time um, because you realize the difference, particularly when you have um, a female who's aggressive. Um, and when you're also in a position where you're trying to also protect your child at the same time, me having my child in my arms when uh, some of my assault happened, um, you're really put in this difficult situation that um, is very hard to navigate. What I would tell men though, is that you're gonna have to start to actually document. You're gonna have to actually call the police uh, uh, if necessary. 
uh, and make reports. Um, that's something that many of us don't do. It's something that I didn't do. Um, matter of fact, there's an audio tape that caught a lot of my incident, and you can actually hear me say that uh, I would call the police if you didn't stop, and I never did. And so I think that that is also part of the issue, too, is that that fear of even engaging law enforcement, because we've had such a uh, difficult relationship with them in the past, is something that stops us sometimes from even getting the justice that we need or even the help we need. And furthermore, there's just not a lot of resources for men, black men in particular. Uh, as a matter of fact, just a few years ago, there was only two domestic violence shelters that even um, had spaces for men. Uh, most men uh, who have to deal with those issues have to find either a friend or even a homeless shelter. Wow. Well, Dr. Graham, we're glad you're safe. And we thank you for lending your voice to this important uh, issue.